So thank you very much for joining. Um, I think you can listen to me well. Yes, okay. Uh, everything is working well. So uh, thank you for joining this community call. So we are, we know that we are close to an holiday period for some, some of us, not for all. Uh, uh, so uh, we will, as, as usual, dedicate some time to some of the updates uh, that uh, we usually give. Uh, and we will we decided to dedicate some time to some st uh, studies. It, it was our intention to have, in fact, the, the dedicate, dedicate time to two studies. This study that um, our colleagues will, will present, um, and Andrea and, 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 Andre and Miriam, on the availability of repositories and another study that was recently uh, presented that we can also share the link um, on the let's say that the readiness of repositories for compliance of um, of the European Commission policies but we only have one of these studies present today uh, maybe in one of the coming uh, community calls we can address the, the other one so today in fact we will highlight some of the updates or the work that we are doing related with the open air provide um, and then, uh, together with the, um, our colleagues from CNR and, and, and Open Air, um, Miriam Baglioni and Andrea, and Andrea Manocci, uh, they, they will present this study. I think it's a quite uh, interesting and relevant study um, for us to be aware of also a bit, a bit of the landscape uh, in the area that we work. Uh, as there are lots of things that we need to improve and uh, to modernize and I think this is a relevant contribution for our discussion um, so you know uh, all the information is usually we put it in the in this website in the, in the, in the open air EU, in the open air website where we have the information about the community calls where we have the recordings the, the presentations you know how it works we know that there are always new persons newcomers on board in these community calls and the people that join every month in the first wednesday of the month so um we may repeat some things other no so about the the recent news so um important be aware that the last update is 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 um on the 4th of april so uh, as you uh, usually want to know about this so for sure you will receive uh, some kinds of updates uh, from the broker event soon uh, you can also check that information in, in explore uh, this is important do you remember that um, usually we share a link where you can find the information about the um, the uh, the news or the changes in the in the graph and in the in the in this update so usually we presented that um, we have it um, here in the in this uh, in this page. Uh, so you can access the, um, the 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 last update where we explain the aggregation content workflows. So there was a, a kind of table to report some of the um, of the updates. So now the technical team is doing this because what is relevant is really on the graph side, okay? So every time that there are relevant um, changes in the graph, so which means the relevant is including inclusion of some relevant data source, some change in the in the links, um, some relevant funder included the, the data from that funder, etc. So this information was here, but now it will we will have it in the documentation of the graph website itself, and also on the catalog. So you will see now the links are in the in the in the in the slides, and then they can also share it in the in the in the in the website. So now we have in the in the um, uh, in the website, uh, in the landing page of the service in the open air catalog, you can see this change log. And if there is something relevant introduced in the graph, that is visible in the update. Uh, and the same situation here in the, um, not here, here, 
in the graph website. So graph.openair.eu, you have this versions and change log part where we everything is properly documented and also in the in the in the landing page of the service in the catalog. This is the relevant changes will be made available here. So be aware of this. This is not so critical, but as we like to be uh, quite transparent in terms of the dates of the index, et cetera, et cetera, and people usually like to know, and you can see it in the dashboard also, that information in your dashboard, but you can be also informed. So this is something recent. Uh, the, the other um, three news that we want to highlight, it's not, not uh, so much related with the let's say features, new features or changes in the in the dashboard itself is more about what is going on around that. Uh, so um, one is the, the, the campaign that we are running. So be aware of that. If you uh, are not, um, if you are, com uh, if you are not uh, data source compliant with, with that increase or level three and four of our guidelines, be aware that we are running a campaign for you. So for those that are driver and version two compliant, we are contacting you, asking you to, to work a bit on the update of your compatibility level. We already contacted almost 400 repositories. We are only, we are contacting the, the driver basic compliant repositories by groups of of countries, let's say. So we are sending today the for for Turkish Turkish repositories because in fact is the 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 only country that we is missing. So we already contacted uh, uh, almost all. So we will achieve a little bit more than four hundred repositories contacted. So you can contact us uh, via the help desk help desk um, at openair.eu if you have any doubt about this. We provide guides, we provide more information. There is a guide about that. So if you need support, please ask us. Uh, we can also discuss it at the end of the meeting this if you if you have any issue. Uh, the other work that we are doing is, so we don't need to inform everyone, but I think this is relevant. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but um, uh, the NARCIS, that is the National Aggregation of the Netherlands, is... Um, uh being uh, um so we will will they will put it offline uh, soon this um, the coming months uh, and we are aggregating the content the dutch uh, repositories content via this national aggregator and now we are working with all the um, dutch uh, repository uh, managers to in order for them to register directly in open air so in fact we have this morning a uh, 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 a webinar with them, uh, quite well succeed webinar, and we are happy with the results. And we will have another one in the coming um, week on Thursday. So, if you want to receive information about that, and if you are part of, of this community, contact us. If not, so we just want to also for you to be aware of this work that we are doing with this specific um, country and with this specific community of repositories. Um, the last information. Is that uh, you? You 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 are aware of the open air guidelines, so the the different templates that we did, and the importance of the guidelines. They are a, a, a standard uh, worldwide uh, usage. Also, there are uh, links with other countries, with other regions, uh, not only in Europe, but uh, it's uh, guidelines that are relevant for the, for example, the Latin American uh, network of repositories, La Referencia. It's also a standard for um, Canadian repositories for Japan. So other other alignments that we we have, and the, the idea is that we create a kind of community driven governance, community driven global governance for the for the guidelines and we are initiating this this year uh, the creation of a working group under the MCA, the open air MCA organization and then in in june um, in the open repositories conference we will do we will have a panel uh, where we discuss this with the different um, players in the different regions not only we from open air in 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 europe but also with colleagues uh, from the different uh, countries where and in, in regions where the open air guidelines are being used so if you will be in open repositories be aware of this if not so be aware that we are doing this and we can maybe we can share uh, novelties after that panel so where we will discuss how can we ensure this community driven global governance for our guidelines um so and it's it's it it's uh, i only have two things so 
uh, in the last community call, we discussed about uh, some of the common doubts that we usually receive regarding the dashboard. So how to update the UI IP image interface, the, the, um, when they are visible, et cetera. So uh, if you want to, to check some of the explanations that we give, give, gave to these common doubts, uh, you can check the recordings from the past community call, uh, but be aware that there is a tab in the provide dashboard where we can update the OIP image interface, we can change or we can add a new one, uh, change for the current one that you have the compliance level or have a new one, a different one and indicate the level of compliance. Um, be aware also that if you change the name of your repository or one kind of this change, this is not reproduced automatically in the Explorer, in the different services. You need to wait some time to for this implementation because we do, in fact, a check in our um, um, aggregation um, uh, manager system that to 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 apply to apply these 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 changes. Uh, and then there are also um, that you you can also check when it, when it comes to the the visibility of the records the content aggregated from your repository. Do not forget that there is a collection monitor tab for you to check when the content was aggregated, when the content is transformed and made available in the in the repository. The last also, uh, but, but you can check the recording because we we gave. Um, Detailed demos about these common doubts, but 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 I don't I don't want to spend a lot of time with this. Also, the last question that we usually receive about the metadata enrichments. So that is, um, we don't ensure, let's say, uh, a programmatically an automatic updates for uh, all the systems, but be aware that this this space uh, this space crease have an implementation of the metadata enrichment, so you can have the you can enable the broker events to be visible in your repository and then validate them internally we had already dedicated some time to a, a previous community call to a case um, from a space crease um, use case from trieste trieste university we and uh, there are there is also a project uh, that uh, the, the the italian company for science did for this space seven, uh, the committers from this space seven will assess this implementation uh, for this space seven, and so hopefully this will be also available in one of the coming versions of this space seven. But of course, you have the metadata enrichments available. I remind you that you have a set of one hundred metadata enrichments for you to check, and then if you want to receive. This is just a sample of 100. If you want to receive and to see all the other metadata enrichments for that specific metadata enrichment that you want to receive, you need to subscribe and then you will receive the notifications uh, from a specific uh, here's, for example, links between publications and projects or PIDs from authors or from publications. If you want to receive these kind of things for all the content of your repository, you need to subscribe. What you see in the dashboard is only a sample. Last novelty. As we promised to you to share all the developments regarding the link between open air provide and the onboarding process in YOSC, be aware of this. So in the onboarding of YOSC, of uh, services, uh, uh, resources, data sources, etc., open air is already there. So when you want, I'm, I'm putting here a screenshot from, uh, from a provider that is onboarding a data source. The first step, in fact, when you want to onboard a data source to YOSC, you can select the data source from open air, okay? And you have already pre-filled the information. You just need to fill the, 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 the fields that are not pre-filled by open air. And, uh, and with that, the content is also made available. So, but you need to register it. Even if you are in open air, you need to register it. But what is important is that if you are part of open air, this process is simplified and the content will be made available also, but you need to finalize this registration. So this is a new a novelty that you can access, but you can only see it if you manage a provider of YOSC, okay? So if you, it's a provider is already, uh, validated in, in YOSC, uh, you can um, uh, start 
uh, onboarding your data source, okay? Be aware of that. So it's an, uh, if it is a relevant information for you and if you want more information, we can, uh, we can give it to you. So these are the recent novelties, the information. We can discuss it um, at the end uh, as there are some uh, constraints in terms of, of time. So let's move to the presentation of Miriam and Andrea. You can also present yourself if you want. Uh, this is the study that they will present. It's an interesting study. Knock, knock. It's not knock, knock, knock on the heaven's door, like the song, but it's knock, knock, who's there? A study on scholarly repositories availability. So I will stop um, sharing and uh, you can you can start sharing with the, our colleagues that are present in this community call the results of this study and, and why uh, it's a relevant study for the, the community. What were the main findings? So I'm not, not sure who will share the screen if it's oh, okay, Andrea. Perfect. Yeah, I am. Can you see that? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Slideshow. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. The floor is yours. Thank you for, for, for having the availability. Yes. So uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Andrea Manoja, I'm a researcher at EST, at CNR ISTI, actually now the, the affiliation has changed uh, the, the order, apparently. And uh, in this work, which is uh, by me, Miriam and Paolo, we are uh, testing um, the availability of scholarly repositories. And the main idea is that Basically, we know that scholarly repositories are cornerstone of modern open science practices as they preserve and uh, uh, research data, software, and preprints. And it, they provide means to uh, cite uh, these um, research outputs from, from, from other places. And uh, they can be general purpose and catch all, uh, as Zinodo, for example. Um, or they can be thematic and research community community specific uh, as the one, for example, for for uh, for life science, uh, protein databases, and so on and so forth. So, um, scholarly registries uh, facilitate the discoverability and referencing of scholarly uh, repositories because they provide IDs, either persistent or local. Uh, they provide uh, each repository with a uh, public profile, which is essentially metadata. <clears throat> and um, and uh, they are, uh, so, I mean, they can affect uh, the, the, the work of individual researchers, but because in order to discover uh, repositories, they, they can, they can turn to registries to discover which are the suitable ones uh, for the disciplines at hand, but uh, they, they could also use uh, standard um, search engines like Google for, for this purpose, but definitely uh, registries are uh, an authoritative sources for whomever uh, is running a scholarly infrastructures and a scholarly services such as Open Air. Uh, and this is why this work is partially funded by, by Open Air Nexus. Um, and I'm saying this because if you need to discover, um, I mean, if you need an exhaustive uh, listing of, of repositories out there, the best place is to go uh, ask uh, to, to someone that is doing this, uh, this job of, of, um, of uh, collection and, uh, and, uh, and registration. So, um, the essential research question in a nutshell is that uh, provided that scholarly registries are, uh, are authoritative sources of information, uh, will the repositories that are registered therein be, avail be available upon request? Um, we selected four prominent registries, uh, uh, which are fair sharing, read through data, open door, and raw. And these are the, the, the uh, the facts about uh, about them. Uh, they have been dumped uh, uh, by various means in February 2022. And um, yeah, I mean, it is not uh, an, an, an outstanding uh, list of repositories out there, but we are, you know, like it's over 10,000 or cl close to 15,000 uh, of them. 
uh, in total. Uh, yeah, okay, so 13,356 uh, unique URLs because um, some of them were um, uh, registered multiple times in, 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 in more than one place. Um, so with all these URLs, uh, we requested them both in HTTP head and HTTP get and uh, having uh, a max allowed a number of, re of redirect set to 30, as well as the number of seconds for timeout. And for each request, we were tracking original URL, final, final URL after uh, redirection, if any, the final status code, redire redirections chain, uh, redirection status codes, latency. And um, we didn't alter in any way we didn't adjust the original URLs contained in the registries. And this was the, the idea behind this is that basically um, that information is the one that the repository manager uh, put inside the, uh, inside the metadata of the repository that they intended to register in the registries. So that, ur that URL supposedly was the one to work. So we didn't, we didn't change that. We didn't tamper with that in, in, any, in any way. Um, data notebooks are, are available on Zenodo, so you can you can uh, download everything and, uh, and reproduce and play with uh, with our analysis and results. Um, so uh, from from uh, our our uh, requests, uh, twenty five of them. 25% of them, sorry, uh, exhibited uh, some kind of problems. 18% uh, were going to into timeout and the rest trigger uh, 400 and 500 errors. 400 is like in the not found category and 500 is uh, basically uh, internal server error uh, family of errors. Uh, there was a slightly different behavior between head, which means that they are served in a different way on, on the uh, repository side. And this is in contrast with the uh, RFC um, uh, specifications, which demand the same, the same um, response. Uh, nevertheless, the, 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 the method um, without you know, considering the, the method of the request. Um, also, uh, syntactically, syntactically uh, okay requests uh, that were finishing with ending with a with a two hundred uh, class error, they could still be semantically wrong. For example, here in this uh, for this uh, repository, uh, if you follow the the URL, it goes on a website. And it's supposedly about a magazine or something that's totally unrelated with uh, digital libraries for hair, hair, hair system education. <laughs> and in case of uh, re re redirections, we had 32% uh, of the URLs that were going redirecting to somewhere else, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's totally legit uh, behavior, but uh, 300 of them were uh, uh, even after redirection, we're ending up in errors, which is not great. And uh, and we also noticed that no, none of the redirection chains uh, were was longer than five. And uh, we also observed a, a shrinking phenomenon, basically, in the in the URL uh, space. So, like after redirection, we had. Um, a number of, of uh, or reduced number of final URLs, basically like 3,000 roughly uh, URLs were uh, um, colliding to uh, colliding, were uh, redirecting into uh, uh, 1,500 URLs. So we started uh, checking those and, uh, manually mm, because most of the redirects were super fine, like HTTP to HTTPS or uh, prepending dub 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 uh, appending at the end a uh, training slash. But uh, we discovered, for example, 16 Norwegian repositories that were written to the same web page 
that was telling that the uh, URL was not valid and that uh, and was providing a list of, of repositories uh, available, which incidentally did not include any of these 16 repositories uh, that we start from. And then again, like six databases at the National Library of Medicine were redirecting to web a web page telling that the information has been integrated into another service or seven, seven seemingly unrelated URLs pointing to not found page on a domain that was held by a company in, in the digital libraries market segment. So it was rather unfeasible to uh, check them all uh, manually. So we just, you know, like um, from the errors we had, we sampled uh, looking for individual examples on, that could be relevant. And um, so, yeah, this is something that we need to we need to ex extend in, in in the future. And uh, so, like the main source of inspiration for this work is this paper that has been presented at uh, TPDL in 2020. And um, we are missing uh, these two bits here, basically uh, including additional headers like uh, cookies allow cookies and in, uh, in, uh, in, in the requests. And uh, we didn't also uh, simulated uh, human computer interaction because uh, basically when you, there's a way to simulate uh, a human browsing, even though, even though it's ha everything happens, even though the, the request happens in a, in, a, in a totally programmatical way. So uh, this has been done in this work, but it's, it's, uh, planned as a future extension of this one. Uh, and as well, another uh, shortcoming of, of this uh, preliminary first study is that a one-shot resolution as, as the one we did provides just a snapshot, which potentially can be distorted by transient outages and technical issues. As an exercise, we tried this hypothesis by checking Ukrainian repositories, which is the UA domain. And, um, like we we checked them, and twenty four point six percent of them were unreachable, mostly in in East Ukraine, which uh, you know like uh, highlights that um, the infrastructure was disrupted, and uh, and uh, of course like the the, the repositories um, availability it, it, it follows it, it cannot be cannot be. Uh, can't hold anymore because of the uh, technical issues in the in the in the in the network and and probably repeating the same the same um, like batch of resolution in multiple times over an extended period like one year that would be what provide a more truthful uh, um, snapshot of the of of the of the thing. So uh, yeah, repeating, let's say the, the, the same set of experiments um, like over like one year uh, time frame would, would uh, yield more accurate results. So uh, in any case, it's safe to say that one in four repositories uh, registered in scholarly registries is not accessible. And this is a, is a, is a lower uh, bound of the actual amount of problems because um, as I showed before, there are like uh, URLs that redirect to something that's totally legit, but uh, is, not, is unrelated. So it, it, it works from a technical uh, standpoint, it resolves, but it's, uh, it's not related anymore to the, to the repository in the first place. And also you have soft 404s, which is basically um, a request that goes okay in terms of a HTTP protocol. So it, 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 it ends in a okay status code, but the web page that's prompted afterwards is basically something that says, uh, repositories you were looking for is not available here. You, you can't find it. So it's a, it's a soft not found uh, website error. And uh, of course, like the uh, repositories that have been discontinued, moved and merged. And, uh, and this increases actually the, the, the number of problems uh, that, that, uh, that repositories in uh, registering registries can, can have. 
um, there is uh, a chance to to extend these analyses and have a and have a, a more um, a thorough uh, view. And, and to, to do this, we, we should actually uh, probably st start using Mementos, which is basically go into uh, the Internet Archive, for example, and check how the website uh, looked back in time to see whether there's a, um, the content went adrift uh, over the years. But of course, it's, it was something that couldn't be uh, done in this first study. And um, and all in all, uh, what the take a takeaway message is that repositories and IT infrastructure managers have a, have a, have a fundamental role, uh, and uh, and they are part of these uh, these functions. Because uh, when whenever they do something uh, that that bring that takes a, a, a repository away from the URL declared in the registry like you you can create uh, problems downstream so it it can have an impact on on especially on reproducibility and open science practices let alone the problems that infrastructure sites as as, uh, as opener have in 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 processing the content of the registries themselves uh that would be all so thank you great thank you very much uh, i'm not sure if there are um, questions uh... What what were the so so feel free to um, turn on your audio and uh, and ask questions if you want to put it in the chat you can also do it so it was twenty five percent of um, of let's say of 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 errors so eighteen percent of timeout and then the rest was uh, what kind of of errors can you remind me so because you put it in the slide um... that I... Uh, it was uh, internal server error yeah. okay. 500 or bad request 400 families okay 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 yes 25 is, is a lot mm -hmm. okay. yeah i mean uh, considering that you turn into uh, to a place that supposedly has to have the true the, the Truth about about the repositories, you would expect um, higher numbers. I would say not uh, not a failure every every twenty every one yes. uh, out of four. So we have already then, a question here the... mm -hmm. from the twenty five. Uh, so thank you, Marcos, for for the question. So it's in our uh, Google Notes meeting. Uh, meetings of the notes uh, notes of the meeting sorry from the 25 percent of now missing repositories do we have information how many of them use it as well persistent identifiers like the ois uh... mm, no we didn't we didn't check that um uh, medium uh so we did we didn't check whether the url pointed by the the, the thing is that I mean, the, the, uh, usually the URL uh, that points to the repository is, is not uh, is not saved in in a uh, DOI or um, a, 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 the, the the best could be for in the case of fair sharing, for example, the uh, repository uh, profile as itself a registry, as a, itself a, a D DOI. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the same in so um, like. For, Yes, so fair sharing provides the OIs uh, for all the registrations they they have inside, <clears throat> which is great. Some other registries do not have these, uh, do not provide this benefit. Let's yes. say, but, but it is the um, registry. Who but but it's the is the registry metadata profile yes. which associates the, the the DOI to the then, registry. Exactly. Mm. Then then the profile doesn't have mm. i mean uh, uh, doesn't have it doesn't have a doi pointing to uh to the registry itself usually it's just a plain url that that goes somewhere like to, to the domain of a university or a research center but i didn't check we didn't check for 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 dois let's say in yes, this uh, in this url those 25 percent yes mm -hmm. Okay. This this work question. about DOIs was done instead in in the in the work we were citing. The authors were trying to uh, do this exercise with DOIs that are cited that are somehow present in in literature. 
So they were resolving and they, they had problems in, with, with those as well. Okay, thank you. Is there any other question? I have two comments and questions, but uh, if others have, so Marcus is saying thank you. Okay, uh, one of the one of the, the reasons also that I so I, I felt this um, study interesting and is something relevant for open air context is that we really when it start when it comes to the registration process etc and as open air uses the authoritative sources the authoritative directories is always critical to to have um, uh, the information proper updated in the directories and we receive all kinds of, of issues in the in the in the history in the recent years of open air we receive all kinds of issues uh, double registrations in the in the, in the registries um, um wrong links in the last register in the in the directory etc so one of the the things for sure is that we all part of this community call and our colleagues repository managers need to ensure that the our information the information of our repository is proper uh, identified uh, in in the um, in the in, in the directories um so do, do from the um, from the directories perspective do you have any any suggestion for 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 them uh, so from the study, so for sure we have this suggest this action. So all repository managers need to ensure that they uh, made available updates in the directories. But for the directories, uh, is there anything that to, we can also do uh, if we manage the directory? So this precedent identifier for sure is something relevant. But uh, like tools to do to run this kind of checks, um, um, do you have any? From the analysis you you did, the, is there anything relevant that you can share? Like uh, suggestions for sorry, the directories? Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, Pedro. I I I really need to rush. And, yes, 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 uh, Maybe yes, yes. Miriam can can take uh, the question. I mean, I I, I have some ideas, but <laughs> I, I I really need to to leave. Thanks okay. for inviting and uh, okay. okay. See you guys. Miriam, do you have any any idea, any contribution? What is relevant also for the directories to? They already do something because when they check, they when they verify that there is some problem with the with the repositories, like for example, uh, repositories are um, moved or something like that, they like Retry Data does uh, write and advertise on the page mm -hmm. that is relevant for the registry. But if they could do something like we did, just to verify if the URL is responding, if uh, it is, uh, if, even, even if they do not check the semantic uh, correctness of the URL, just to have an idea and uh, say to the repository manager, look, your URL is not reachable. It has not been reachable for X, X days. Mm -hmm. something like that it could be really helpful yes okay okay thank you um so the 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 um, one of the of the of the things that we need to pay attention is really to 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 um, uh, keep the, re the 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 records that we have in in our in this kind of services uh, proper up to date uh, this is one thing that i found uh, um critical there are then some some issues in some directories back that they don't have the needed tools to keep track on everything so even when the repository manager is paying attention he ask uh, an update and then in open door sometimes the, there is the question that the, they create two entries for the same yes. repositories and there are also in the data more than one entry for the same repository okay. sometimes and uh, as andrea said before we have entries uh, that are the same from several repositories. So the manager uh, re registered the same repository, both in Retry Data and, and Zenodo. It is not the case for fair sharing because they manage the registry completely by themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. But of course, as you said, if they uh, could run a check and see if, for example, the uh, on page of the repository match among yeah. the, mm -hmm. the various registrations. It is another work we are doing with, with Andrea 
uh, that is to uh, verify the number of overlaps of registrations within the same registry and among the, the registry mm -hmm. for the repository. And we have found many of uh, uh, overlaps within uh, OpenDoc. Okay. Thank you. So if it is a, if we have a lesson learned from, from today, and this was also the intention was to highlight that keep keep your records uh, up to date. So with the right um, with the right information, even if it is the sometimes we the, so the title, the name, the and then important the 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 URL and even the the OIP image interface, for example, in some cases is also requested. So it's but sometimes uh, for the same repository, also the uh, information about the kind of content is different, different from one registration to another one, even within the same registry. Yes, yes I do yes. not have the example now, but yes, we know. So this is the, the issue: is that uh, there are some people that did the registration five years ago, yes. someone that came and do again now. So be aware of that. So check. Uh, the way that your repository and your service is present in these directories because this is relevant for, for, for other kinds of services like, like open air that we are real relying on alternative registered. So for repositories, open door, V3 data and fair sharing. Also, there is the for Cree systems, the DRIS, the DRIS mm -hmm. um, directory that is important also for you to, to, to be aware. I think it's 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 also I think it's if we we have this action the call for action to to to, to pay attention for this kind of things that are that are critical. Uh, this is not a formal study, but in one of the meetings, it's just a, something that is that I I want to share in one of the recent meetings that with another colleagues under the Confederation of Open Access Repositories. One colleague presented a study. Maybe maybe we will I will invite them and then I can make this publicly available. But uh, they did um, some tests with the OIP image interfaces URLs from the OIP image interfaces available in Open Door, and the number of um, non-resolved links were much much higher than you presented. So it's for, uh, around the 40, 46 of the OIP image URLs uh, were not resolved. 46%, 46% of the, um, the links available in Open Door. So this doesn't mean that 46 of the real repositories are unavailable in terms of OIP image interface because there are uh, old records, uh, so double records from the same repository. Maybe one is, is correct and the other yeah, is wrong. Not. But But of course, 46 is already uh, uh give all uh, already a, a number for us to think about and then when we want to when we are working on open repositories to make available the scholarly content uh, to the world and we have this kind of uh, problems with the um, the the doors that open the the content for 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 the world uh, so we need to think about that so um pay do, attention do to the records a, do you have a, a world that you can share uh, no, I, I, I suppose I suppose this will be presented soon. I, I will invite the, the colleague to to present in one of the community calls. I, I want to challenge. It was just really just a testing, a quick testing, downloading the the dump from from Open Door and uh, so and run the tests. But yes, this is this is critical. I found it quite critical, and I want that to be presented for us for sure in Open Air, but also in the, this community call. So. Uh, I think this study was useful because of this call for action of, of all of us to ensure that we have the content properly updated. For those that don't know about the fair sharing directory, so you can also register there your repository, open door, uh, then re3 data for research data repositories. Uh, it's important to just to make clear that re3 data was the first one to give the OIs to repositories, but fair sharing is also providing that DOIs. I suppose that there is some kind of gap between the DOI from re 3 data and the DOI then in fair sharing, but I'm not sure. Maybe you can give receive some clarifications from them. Um, and then the, for Chris system DRIS, so ensure that you your that your repo your system is properly re registered in these directories. Miriam, any final remark? Uh, 
No, just to, when you register your repository, check before if you have already registration, update the metadata, and if something change, please go back and change the information. Just uh, no more like, no more than this. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we are coming to the to an end. So be aware of that those novelties that we shared. So the last update, first of first of April, in terms of content from open air, and also this work uh, around the onboarding of Yosk. So we will for sure dedicate in one of the upcoming calls more um, uh, more time to this onboarding in Yosk for you to be to to be like with a demo of the process, etc. But be aware of that. This is also a critical issue, and it's important to highlight that the provide of open air is linking to the onboarding of Yosk. Um, we have some problems during the morning if you if you access the, the, the provide with the um, AAI, the, the login. Uh, they are already solved. I was just checking. So we had some time, uh, one hour or, or a bit more, that the system for when we tried to log in was not available, but everything is working well now. So if you try that, be aware of that. Is any other question, any other topic that you want to discuss, any feedback, any issue with your repository that you want to report that we can uh, solve it now? So about the dots, the common dots that I also highlighted, if you want to have more details, I did some demos in the last uh, community call. So please check the recordings in the in the in the open air website. Uh, they are available there. So Miriam, uh, please share the the slides with us in order yes. for us to share it with the colleagues. I think uh, we study. I will send them Perfect. to Andre. To Andre. Perfect. Thank you very much. And then Andre, that is organizing this session with me, will send um, the slides for all the participants. Will be also made available in the in the website. So, do not forget that we have the um, that we have the the newsletter that you usually receive. Okay. We highlighted some interesting uh, um, novelties in the last newsletter that we sent out uh, yesterday and, and before so if you don't if you don't receive it subscribe uh, in openair.eu slash newsletters uh, we highlighted some uh, some um, some important novelties it's not this one but uh, be aware of some of the the highlights that we did about the campaign uh, about the, the 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 campaign with the interoperability guidelines, also about this this study that we we have highlighted, um, and about uh, some guidance that we are providing also for repository managers. So please subscribe the newsletter and follow our community calls. Our coming community call will not be on the fifth of May, but on the third of May. Okay. So we will have the community call on the first Wednesday of May that will be on the uh, 3rd of May, okay? Uh, I'm just confirming in the calendar. Thank you very much for joining. Um, do not do not hesitate to contact us via the help desk, help desk at openair.eu if you have any question. So have a nice day. And um, if it is the case to have some holidays in this Easter, also enjoy <laughs> in this period. Okay. Bye-bye all. Thank you.